shift by the back. Okay, question up here at the back. Um, the, um, we hear a lot of, uh, a moment about uh, polarization of Republicans and Democrats. And uh, <coughs> then I saw, heard Gary talking there about 47% uh, Republicans, 47% Democrats, and 6% in the middle. And the election was all about 6%. I just was scratching my head a little bit about that. Uh, and maybe Tad or somebody else could. Is there much research or knowledge of how many Republicans vote for uh, a Democrat president uh, and uh, Democrats the other way around, or how many people shift between elections? Because you're talking about the, the is there really coming much back. Is there really much uh, There is a lot of research, and what the research says is that uh, American voters increasingly are moving uh, towards their respective political polls, either you know Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative that um, there are far fewer people who are showing a willingness to split their ticket or go from one party to the other. That in fact the base, uh, you know, allegiance of parties is growing in the United States. So um, that's why the number of people, I think Gary's absolutely right, there's a small sliver of vote in the middle. These voters happen to occupy certain swing states, battleground states, and that's why there's so much effort being directed at so few people. You know, they, they, they're going to be, the, the advertising right now on television, television is broad-based media, okay, I make television ads, when you put TV ad on, you're hitting a lot of people, but now even the television advertising is increasingly targeted towards niche groups of voters, because these small groups are, are deciding elections, so I, I think it's becoming more polarized, I don't see an end to it in, in the near future, as long as the two-party system is the dominant force in American politics. So the bottom line is, a tight election, uh, could put a bet on a banner, but don't put a lot of money. I wouldn't bet the house on Thank you, Gary Murphy, Tad Devine, Anya Kerr, Tom Plank, and Larry Donnelly. Thank you very much. We're going to name the late. Apologies to Dennis for the late start, but Dennis McAndrew will start his one man play shortly. First, a little bit of the Kennedy Summer School. For all those whose cares have been our concern, the work goes on, the cause endures, the hope still lives, and the dream shall never die. Showing me your paper, it's a question of showing all of the people in here that are watching. 
watching this program, the paper. Well, they can get they ought to have an opportunity to know. Yeah, I think it's a, a wonderful idea to, to take it through piece by piece. And, uh, and that's what you have to do as legislators. I just, I that's exactly what you have to do as legislators. Now he's poor family leave. Now he looks like he's poor minimum wage. Now he's poor education uh, reform. If we give him two more weeks, he may even vote for me because I'm the best. way to find out about what a party will do is what it, it has done. Uh, we were the ones that brought higher education, the Medicare programs, the Medicaid uh, programs, knocked down the walls of discrimination. We brought a sound uh, economy, a sensible foreign policy. Those are the, the essential values of the Democratic Party, aren't they? I love this country. I believe in the bright light of hope and possibility. I always have, even in the darkest hours. I know what America can achieve. I've seen it. I've lived it. And we're with Barack Obama. We can do it again. This is the cause of my life. New hope that we will break the old gridlock and guarantee that every American, North, South, East, West, young, old, will have decent quality health care as a fundamental right and not a privilege. victory for people all over this country whose lives will be more secure because of this law and the Supreme Court's decision to uphold it. If Teddy were here, he would tell us now it's time to roll up our sleeves, get to work, fully implement the law, and move on with the business of, of our country. This one was a long time coming, and it's one that I knew um, my husband would have loved to have seen. Everything he did was about the future. It was about going forward. It was about passing the torch to a new generation. passion was born not of some rigid ideology, but of his own experience. That large-heartedness, that concern and regard for the plight of others, is not a partisan field. It's not a Republican or a Democratic field. It, too, is part of the American character. Well, I never shied away from being called a liberal. But what I have done is stand up for my beliefs. The work begins anew. The hope rises again. And the dream lives on.